It takes a big person to admit they were wrong. And folks, I admit that I was wrong about Undercover 2025 ADK. In a previous video, I said that it sucked, but it actually fucking rules. So I want to return to it today and explain what changed my mind and made me realise that it is in fact a banger. When I originally covered the game, I specifically played it in the hopes of defending it and redeeming it. You see, IGN of all places decided to do a hatchet job on this one back when it dropped. In that review, the writer spends an inordinate amount of time talking about the curves of the protagonist's ass rather than really covering the game in any meaningful way, but ultimately they said that it sucked. They gave it 2 out of 10 or some shit. As such, I wanted to play it and prove them wrong, but that was a difficult task as my initial impression was negative too. That is, until I spent a little bit more time with the mechanics. You see, the movement controls are pretty stiff and annoying. IGN did have a point on that one. However, if you can master the strafing, crouching and rolling, then it all starts to come together quite nicely. Look at this poor effort from my first run through. And now take a look at these chat moves I was able to pull off once I'd got used to the controls. But before we get into all that mechanical jazz, what is this game? It's an action game with some light puzzle elements a la Headhunter. Something in a near future police story set in Japan, but it's pretty thin on plot otherwise. You wronged this big drug cartel guy, so he blows up your partner in revenge and you gotta go and chase him down. Standard 80s popcorn movie stuff, but I do dig all that. Also you have this robot cat, so that's pretty neat. The game starts with you rolling up in this hotel where some shit's popping off, several people have been murdered, but you come in blasting and get yourself a card key. Now this is where I gave up the first time through, as the key didn't seem to open any of the doors here. Upon replaying it, I now realise that this has the Resident Evil 1 mechanic, where a door will never automatically check if you have a key. You have to stand in front of the door, open your inventory, and manually choose the key. A little bit clunky, but nothing game breaking once you know what you're doing. And then after you've worked that out, you can actually get into what is a genuinely enjoyable game. Janky is all hell of course, but look who you're listening to here. If you don't want jank, then you're in the wrong place. The game does have a few neat mechanics, not least of which is the ability to hold up enemies. If you train your gun on them without firing, they will surrender and give you something like ammo or health. I could only get this to work when my gun was empty, since the reload animation takes a while and while you're doing it the bad guys think you're aiming the gun at them and they surrender. It's weird, but it ended up playing into my overall strategy. I'd keep an eye on my ammo and work out when my next holdup was due. After a while you find Fat Otacon over here and he opens up the shutter doors for you so you can access the kitchen and the rooftop areas. Also this opulent ballroom here where you can really take in the sunny blue skies after your shootout. Once you get up on the roof it all starts to get a little bit of Metal Gear. You got these big Urcon units here with the little crawl spaces that you can sneak under. The stealth play here is very rudimentary but it's still a welcome addition. And after the opening raid mission is done we get a change of pace walking around the city streets at night, checking into this dingy hotel, carousing with the locals outside a posh nightclub. A little bit more Metal Gear sneaking and scoping, there's just a pleasant pace to the whole endeavour and even with the limited amount of things to do, I would say that the game stays fresh. After getting used to the controls and blasting through the first few sections, I started to develop a very positive view of this game and I am going to play it through to completion. It's certainly not an all time classic, but it does have a nice aesthetic and it has fun if simple gunplay, maybe on the level of something like Siphon Filter, which is another game that I love dearly. So if you like kinda generic third person shooters from this era, I think you should definitely check this one out. But stick at it and get used to the weird controls, and if you do that you'll soon be having a fine time. 